It's November 29th, 2023. I'm in Utica, of course, along Schuyler Street. First snowfall of the season. Thought I'd catch the Susquehanna heading out this morning. Skyler Street is on a grade. I think the engine's working a little hard, harder than usual, with the rails being slippery. Accumulated snow and ice. I don't think the crossing protection is working. Ah, there it goes. My friend the cat was duly impressed with the passage of the Susquehanna. Stay warm, kitty.
couple hours beyond the last segment. I'm along Railroad Street in Clayville, New York, about 10 miles south of Utica. The crew did a little switching in the Utica area. Now heading down to Sanger Field, which is 23 miles from Utica, with three covered hoppers. This is right smack in the middle of Paris Hill and it's 1.8% grade. Miles long, lots of curves. 3040 is limited to seven loads coming up the hill. A lot of folks have asked about that building, whether it had any connection to the railroad. You can see a little bit of a cutout there, as far as I know from talking to Doug Ellison who's extremely knowledgeable about this line and who's writing a book about it. The building had no connection to the railroad whatsoever. Last I knew there was a speed restriction on this crossing, I believe 10 miles per hour. They're going about 25 up to the first crossing over Main Street and Clayville and they'll slow right after that to get to the restriction for this crossing. And it's taking a little longer for them to get here. I imagine they're running into some difficulties due to icy snow covered rails slowing them down a bit. I've seen several trains over the years stall here on Paris Hill. So it's no surprise they're moving a little slower at 1.8 percent. Paris Hill was the ruling grade on predecessor road Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western. Still on Paris Hill. This is Summit Road in Cassville. You can get a feel for the grade. Looking up the tracks here. And this is just south of Richfield Junction, where the track split off the Utica Main, went to Richfield Springs. Those tracks were torn up in the early 1990s, a little over 20 miles. One mile remains beyond the uh, Richfield Junction. They used to uh, load stone trains there. That's why they kept the mile. So just in case the stone business came back, they'd be able to load there once again.
I am now in Paris Station, just a few hundred yards north of the summit of Paris Hill. And be told is taking a keen interest in the events here. Lincoln Davies has had a presence here on Paris Hill since the 1860s. It received shipments by rail for many decades, but no longer. So cats were my audience on Schuyler Street, up here in the farm country. We have cows. The owner of this farm is also a member of my Facebook channel, Railroading Rambler. Now, cows have been known to hoof it away from the tracks when the train approaches, so we'll see what these guys do when 3040 comes upon the scene. over the summit now on the way to Sangerfield. Thanks for watching brown cow. See you around next time. So a little later on in the day, late afternoon, the crew is returning to Utica with a string of empties from Sangerfield along with some cars picked up off the industrial that were switched out earlier their way down Schuyler Street back to the yard. It's a little breezy. 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Zero Celsius. So it's a bit nippy out here. The sun angle isn't the greatest.
Russo from Utica, New York, along the New York Susquehanna and Western. This is Railroading Rambler. Saying out for now. And please let me know where you're viewing this from, please. Haven't asked that in a while, but always interested to know where you guys are from. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, it's Railroading Rambler and Vitold, who's in the car over here. Out for now.